I'll be sharing with you nine of the biggest fitness mistakes I made as a skinny fat guy almost 10 years ago when I started my fitness journey. I was making these mistakes for the first two years of my journey and was extremely frustrated at the lackluster results when I looked in the mirror. When I figured out the mistakes I was making, I finally started to see results. I started to build muscle and get shredded and then I went on to compete in my very first amateur competition, winning first place in several different divisions. I did all of this naturally without any performance enhancing drugs, no steroids, no peptides, no SARMs, nothing. In this video, I'm gonna share with you those mistakes so you don't make them as well. One of the biggest mistakes that I made in the first few years of my own training journey was my obsession with isolation exercises such as the bicep curl, such as the ab crunch machine, and I was leaving a lot of gains on the table because I was neglecting compound exercises. When I started to incorporate these compound exercises, the golden five, deadlifting, bench press, the military press, also known as the overhead press, the barbell squat and pull-ups, then my body started to significantly change. I started seeing muscle that I'd never seen before in my life. So I highly recommend incorporating these compound movements into your training regimen as a skinny fat guy or girl. The next mistake that I made is Number two, too much cardio. I was doing one to two hours of cardio five days per week, and I was wondering why my body wasn't changing. When I reduced that down to 30 minute sessions three times per week, and I incorporated that cardio into structured lifting training sessions throughout the week, then my body started to dramatically change. So this is a sample of my timetable, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday through to Sunday. So I would do three days of lifting, that's what I started doing, three days of lifting, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whilst I was doing my night shift. On Monday, I would do push, Wednesday would be pull, and Friday would be legs. So I would do compound exercises on those three days. Monday was push compound exercises. So we're talking bench press, we're talking overhead press, as we've just talked about. On Wednesday was pull, so I would focus predominantly on deadlifting on that day. And then Friday was doing barbell squats. And then on every other day, I would do 30 minute cardio sessions on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, no more than 30 to 40 minute cardio sessions that involved the rowing machine, the bike, the assault bike, the Stairmaster. It's up to you what type of cardio you choose. I just picked whatever I wanted to do at the time. Um, but if I couldn't go into the gym on these other days because my night shift was too, too crazy, then I would do my lifting sessions first and then I would do my cardio straight after my lifting sessions. Number three, not tracking anything. So one of the biggest mistakes I made as a skinny fat guy was I wasn't tracking my calories or my macros, i.e. my nutrition. I, wasn't, I had no idea about that stuff or what it even meant. I would just eat whatever I wanted whenever I felt like it. I would uh, go into the gym and do my isolation exercises, but I would never record how much weight I lifted for how many sets and how many reps. I just didn't think it really mattered. When it came to measurements, I didn't do that either. I didn't take tape measurements. I didn't weigh myself daily. I had no idea what my body was doing, except I took the occasional progress photo every few weeks and wondered why my body wasn't changing. When I started to incorporate proper tracking, then I started to see my body change. I started first by tracking my nutrition. So I got an app called MyNet Diary and MyFitnessPal. You can use MyFitnessPal, but I stuck with MyNet Diary. I figured out my calories for getting shredded and my macros for getting shredded. And I figured out my calories for building muscle. I made two separate videos, I'll link them up down below, that will show you as a skinny fat person how to calculate your macros and your calories for bulking or for cutting. I then put that into my net diary and I tracked everything I put into my mouth using that app. When it came to lifting, I used an app called FitNotes. You can download this from the app store. And I started recording all of my lifts, all of my compound exercises, bench press, deadlift, overhead press, squat. Everything was recorded inside this app, FitNotes. That then allowed me to know from one week to the next that I was slowly adding weight to those key compound lifts. When it came to measurements, I started weighing myself every day and then taking the average weekly weight change and seeing if my body was either increasing in average or decreasing in average. Next one, number four, 
taking the wrong advice. So I spent way too much time in the early days as a skinny fat guy consuming the information and advice from fitness influencers as opposed to fitness educators. When I shifted my focus to learning from fitness educators and learning the science behind what it takes to build muscle and what it takes to shred fat based in science, then I started to see my body dramatically change. These are some of the guys that I highly recommend that you look into and learn from. These are the guys that heavily influenced my own transformation journey, and this is not a complete list. I won't go through each of them individually in detail, but starting with Mark Ripito, he was one man that heavily influenced my own transformation journey. He's got a book called Starting Strength. It's a blue covered book. I downloaded it from Kindle many years ago, and I still reference that book to this day. That book is the book that talks about all the compound movements that I started to incorporate into my own lifting journey, the bench press, the overhead press, the squat, the deadlift, and so forth. He explains in detail how to execute those techniques correctly and accurately. Moving down the list here, we have Eric Holmes. Uh, we have Lane Norton. He has a YouTube channel called BioLane. I've learned a lot from him. Menno Hanselmans, I've done his course. I highly recommend Menno as well. Brett Contreras, uh, the glute guy. Phenomenal guy, a lot of science-based information and resources from him. Eric Trexler is another one, and there's many more that I might create a separate video on later on. Next one, number five, not eating enough protein. This is definitely one of the biggest mistakes I made eight, nine, or 10 years ago as a skinny fat guy. When I sat down and figured out exactly how much protein I was eating, it was only around 70 to 75 grams of protein each day. So it was definitely not enough protein to support my training goals back then, even though I was doing mainly isolation exercises back then. But regardless, I should have been getting more protein than 70 to 75 grams each day. I should have been getting somewhere around 155 grams per day as a minimum. So when I figured out how much protein I actually needed based from the researchers and authors and scientists in the previous error that I made, taking the wrong advice, when I went to the experts, then I learned that I should have increased my protein intake. The amount of protein you need is around 0.8 grams to one gram per pound of body weight per day. And so what I did was I went 0.8 multiplied by 194, which is my goal body weight at the time, which works out to be 155 grams of protein each day. So if you're watching this, if you want to figure out your minimum amount of protein that you need each day, 0.8 multiplied by your goal body weight in pounds. So for me, I have mainly an American audience, so I'm converting everything to pounds for you guys. 0.8 multiplied by 194 is 155 grams of protein each day to support your lifting ambitions. That's a minimum, the maximum being one gram per pound of body weight per day. So one times 194, I'm using myself as an example once again, is 194 grams of protein. So anywhere from 155 to 194 grams of protein each day is more than enough to support my lifting ambitions to build maximum amounts of muscle. Don't make the same mistake, get enough protein. Number six, eating clean to get lean. So there was a phase in the early days of my transformation where all I ate were relatively clean calories. So we're talking calories that are relatively nutrient dense. So I went on this craze of only eating raw vegan cheesecakes, quinoa salads, protein balls, and all kinds of things from health food shops and vegan restaurants and cafes, thinking that if all I ate was food that was nutrient dense and I removed all refined sugar, all refined carbohydrates and all of those other things like ice cream and pizza and things like that, the bad food that I would then get absolutely shredded. Well, this was not the case. The reason why I was eating clean but I wasn't getting shredded was I didn't understand one key concept. I wasn't in a calorie deficit. At that time, I didn't understand about calories and macronutrient targets. I didn't understand that I had to eat in a calorie deficit to lose fat. When I figured out what my macros and my calorie target was at that time, whilst also eating relatively clean in the process, then I started to see results. Then I started to shred fat. In fact, what I did was I figured out that my calorie target for me was around 1900 to 2000 calories per day. And then what I did was I figured out my macronutrients from that, how much protein, carb, and fat that I need. And again, I'll link up two videos down below that will help you calculate your calorie target and your macronutrient target for you. I took my 1900 to 2000 calorie target and I ensured that 80% of my calorie target 
was nutrient dense food. The other 20% or so, even 10% of those calories left over was for food that's not so relatively clean. So I'd have the chocolate bar every now and again. I'd have maybe a small donut or something like that. But it was about 10 to 20% of my calories for foods that are relatively not clean foods or cheat foods. So that's how I separated it. Number seven, not training hard enough. This is definitely one of the biggest mistakes I made in the early days of my transformation. I would just go to the gym and pick any random cable machine to do some random isolation exercise and just kind of run through the motions. I didn't have any intensity. I didn't have any mind in the muscle or mind muscle connection. So what I learned about the rate of perceived exertion and or RPE and training to an RPE of around eight to nine out of 10, which essentially means that after every set, you should only have one or two good reps left in the tank. When I started training against RPE for each and every one of my sets, then I started to see my body transform as well. And what that means is that I brought a whole lot more intensity to my training sessions. There was a lot more intensity, a lot more presence. I wasn't focused on what was going on around me in the gym. My head was just there, focused on the moment, focused on the muscles I was trying to activate through the mind-muscle connection and ensuring that my RPE was around eight to nine for every single one of my exercises. When I first started learning how to do the compound movements of the deadlift, the bench press, the overhead press and so forth, my RPE was around five because I didn't want to bring too much intensity in the beginning while I was still learning the technique. So when I learned the technique of those fundamental compound movements, then I started to really bring the intensity and really just give that exercise my heart and my soul after every single set, eight to nine RPE, one or two useful reps left over after every single set. This is something that I didn't incorporate in the early days of my training because I had never heard of this concept called RPE or rate of perceived exertion. So this is something to definitely incorporate and this is something that definitely helped me transform me from my skinny fat physique. Number eight, buying garbage sports supplements. Definitely one of the biggest traps that I fell into in the early days of my transformation. Out of desperation of not seeing results in my body, I resorted to sports supplements, the billion dollar industry that is full of scams and lies. And what I did was out of desperation because I didn't have proper structure around my nutrition or my training as we've already established in the previous mistakes I've made, I went to sports supplements for the quick fix which never happened anyway. So some of the things that I bought into were fat burners because of course I had this layer of fat over my belly, I didn't want it, I thought if I take a bunch of fat burners I could just melt it off. I wasted so much money on fat burners, which you don't need. I wasted a bit of money on mass gainers because I was a skinny fat guy and I hated that. And I thought if I just take a bit of mass gainer, I could then build some mass. Well, that never happened either. And then pre-workout, I was on the pre-workout train for a while and all pre-workout is really is just a bunch of caffeine and stimulants, really. So save your money. You don't need almost all sports supplements. In fact, if any supplement you should consider taking, it's creatine monohydrate, even though you don't really need to take it, but there is plenty of science around its efficacy. That's creatine monohydrate and protein powder of some sort, whether that be vegan protein powder or whey protein powder or casein. And even though you don't need to take protein powder, it can help you hit your protein target for the day. As we've established, my protein target was 155 grams of protein per day. It can be very challenging to get from chicken, beef, and seafood. So that's where protein powder can help you meet your protein requirements for the day. They are the only two supplements that I would consider taking if you're starting this journey yourself. All the rest of these supplements, you don't need them. Let's move on. Number nine. Unrealistic expectations. One of the biggest challenges I faced as a skinny fat guy years ago was I had unrealistic expectations of how much fat I was to lose as a natural guy not taking any steroids and how much muscle to gain as a natural guy not taking any steroids. I was taking the advice from the wrong people, fitness influencers, many of which are taking steroids and lying about it to their audience. So when you're taking the wrong advice from guys that are lying about their steroid use saying that they're natural and they're not, then it's going to dispel down 
unrealistic expectations to people like me around how much fat I should expect to lose provided I do everything correct with my nutrition and my training or how much muscle I'm likely to gain as a natural guy not taking steroids provided I do everything correctly with my nutrition and my training. So it took a little bit of digging around but I finally figured out how to set realistic expectations and what those realistic expectations are for someone like myself and maybe many of you guys and girls watching that are not taking any kind of performance enhancing drugs, steroids or SARMs or anything like that. If you want to build muscle as someone who's not taking steroids completely naturally, you are likely to gain as a someone who's relatively inexperienced, so a beginner, less than six months of training experience, providing you're getting enough protein and you're hitting your macros and your, your calorie target and so forth, as a male, you should expect to gain 1.5 to 2.5 pounds of muscle per month, at least for the first three to six months of your lifting journey. As a female watching this, if you're a beginner, it's gonna be half that for a month. For fat loss, you should expect to lose, if you're in a proper calorie deficit with right amount of protein, you're hitting your calorie target, one to two pounds of weight per week is a realistic rate of fat loss or weight loss if you're doing everything correctly with your nutrition. Now, of course, this number varies depending on what your body fat percentage is right now. So if you're relatively lean, it's probably gonna be closer to one pound per week, maybe even half a pound per week, provided you're in a calorie deficit. If you have a very high body fat percentage, maybe 30, 35% body fat or more, you could maybe lose three pounds per week, but as you get leaner and leaner and leaner with your body fat percentage, as your body fat percentage drops, the amount of weight that you're able to lose every week will also slow down. This is a recommendation from the National Institute of Health. This is not something that I made up myself. So, and also the CDC recommend this as a healthy rate of weight loss. So back to muscle gain, I'll show you a table up on your screen from Precision Nutrition, which is a very handy table. Take a screenshot of that, which gives you the correct amounts of muscle that you're likely to gain provided you're doing everything correct with your nutrition and training as a beginner, intermediate and advanced lifter, male and female. When I finally figured out how to set realistic expectations for my own lifting journey, then I wasn't likely to just give up on everything because what I was seeing in the mirror was not what I expected. It's super important when you start this transformation journey that you set realistic expectations of what you're likely to see in the mirror when you're doing everything correctly with your nutrition and training. For a step-by-step, all-in-one science-based program that will show you exactly how to eat and train correctly to build muscle, shred fat, and get stronger, head over to bradnewtonfitness.com and check out the Ultimate Body Transformation Program. In this program, you'll go from looking soft, weak, and having skinny arms and a skinny chest to having a lean, muscular, and athletic-looking body. Until next time, guys, see you on the next one.